Oh, wow. That is a close shave or what? Oh, hello, folks. Welcome back. You can tell I look different. I had to clean myself up. I've got my other job tomorrow. So my name is the one, the only, Hobo Tom. And wow, you know what? About 20 some odd more days. I get a haircut too. <laughs> All going to look different. And have you guys ever cleaned up your house and realized you put stuff away but forget where you put it? Shoot. Oh, well. I'm wearing my wrestling t-shirt, my Macho Man t-shirt. I plan to get that, that Bucks of Youth t-shirt next week. Um, because it's wrestling. And I'm here to talk about some pro wrestling. Primarily, I'm talking about SmackDown because I want to get some sleep. But before I do that, I have some shout-outs to give. Shout-outs. Kick out at two. Not only did you kick out at two, but you got in before the ten count because you got in at the six count. And Nolo King, no matter what, no matter what happens on your date, just don't tell her to take it all off. I better make a note, note of that. It's like, I got sick of going in order. Take it all off, Nikki. Six, six count hard, you know, but that's okay. Only those two. And this is actually probably going to be a, probably the shortest show of the week. Primarily because they did a recap match. They did kind of, well, not so much a recap, but a rerun. And for some reason, I just had a lot to talk about those other shows. So I have to find that stupid picture too. That sucks. I should, I should send them the picture of Ho Bo Tom. That would be funny. That would probably piss her off too. Because I know the one picture upset him.
upset them. That's a whole other issue, though. I'm here to talk about some pro wrestling, primarily SmackDown, because this week this is the last show of the week. So this will probably be going up tomorrow morning when I go to the gym. Because I just don't feel like it takes a while to process. It's thundering lightning. And my body's... It's, it's, I'll be honest, folks. It's been a rough week. I had a test in the middle of the week, which sucks. Um, Impact screwed up my whole schedule for the week by changing their time frame. Which means I actually can't do that next week either. I just realized that taking... This is why I have calendars. So I know what the hell I'm doing. Let's see here. Work, gym, video. Yeah. Work, gym. Oh, hey, that's right. Oh, I didn't put down that. Wow. That's weird. But that's okay. I have to find my little date book. It's, it has to be here. I know it's here somewhere. I think I've torn this office apart like... Pff, duh. It's probably right freaking where I stuffed it with my other nonsense notebooks. I bet she... No, it'll take me a while to thumb through stuff. So there's my one main notebook. Boys' life, no. Baseball stuff. I know it has to be here somewhere. I'll find it on my own time, not your time. So I'm here to talk about SmackDown. It starts off. Wow. This was not the best SmackDown. This was a, I hate to say it, is that down there maybe? This was a tale of two Smackdowns. Is that it? No, it's a piece of paper. The first hour was actually pretty good and went by quick. Not the second hour, though. And wow, did they go back into the mid-2000, actually, I'll just say 2010 when I wasn't watching wrestling anymore. The mid aughts when they had stupid competitions that weren't even entertaining. And wow, did that eat up time and make no sense. So let's start off SmackDown. Starts off, uh, Jeff Hardy is on Miz TV or the dirt sheet or whatever they call it. And eventually he takes out the Miz and John Morrison. John Morrison is just getting, just doing job routines for a while. I don't know why. I mean, Johnny Mundo was amazing. When they gave, whatever his real name, John something, but when they gave Johnny Mundo direction and said, hey, focus on this, even as Johnny Impact, wow, was he good. When they're just like, maybe when they said, you know what? Go out there, have a good match. Oh, and here's script. He was good. Now that he's getting, here's the script. Oh, here's also your script for the match. Not so good. So this match was Jeff Hardy taking on The Miz. Uh, Miz just beats on, he's, he gets the better of Jeff Hardy for most of it. Uh, foot, he does a foot sweep to apron. Uh, Jeff, he just gets beat up. And he gets kicked a lot in the head. Um, but one thing I will note, John Morrison, I don't know if, they, if this was the last end of the taping, I might as well put that out there too. One last thing I'm freaking hiding. On my little notepad. Um, John Morrison was the loudest person in that arena, even though they had a crowd of people. And that's going to get me to think, because I know my my coworker, I think who has Jacksonville Jaguars season tickets, she said she got an email from them that said they will be doing football games at quarter capacity. How they do that, I have no idea. I don't know if they sell out to a quarter of said season ticket holders and people, and you just can't buy tickets at the gate. I have no idea how that's going to work. I have no idea how the past races went. Um, I'm sure there were some idiot race car fans in the stadium. I have no idea how it's going to work the 29th for their upcoming race. Um, from what I've heard, rumors and innuendo, WWD does want to start up live event shows now 
thing in September. However, I hate to burst our bubble. Florida might be shutting down again. I know with the schools, I've heard so much from either all virtual and zero classroom to the opposite. Yeah, that doesn't make sense. Yep. All classroom, zero virtual to three days in three days in school, two days virtual, and then the opposite, two days in school, three days virtual, or opening schools and having attendance optional. Uh, so, so, so that then it's in and of itself just the one issue of schools only raised about five different possibilities and i'm sure next week and the weeks leading up to the schools school openings there's going to be more unf i think is having classrooms but if they can go virtual they are going virtual that's kind of somewhat by professor's discretion. Again, some classes work fine virtual. Some classes do not work well virtual. I know that from experience. Very hard to teach virtual biology. It's one of those things that you kind of really have to be there for. However, if you're teaching That'll be a good one. English you'd have to be there for. That's the one you kind of like a humanities program because you could watch. Because generally humanities goes you you listen to a presentation or a lecture for like lecture that's an like an hour, and then you write a paper about it. So again, you could watch someone give a lecture virtually or on YouTube or however they choose to do that and write a paper about that at home. So you could do that from home. That I can see. Humanities you could do from home. What else could you do from home? Probably math because it's really just kind of basic repetition. Computer pro computer you can do from computer work you can do from home. Like Excel, um, as long as as long as you have those, pro granted, if you have the program set up, um, biology is kind of tough. S physics, you might be able to. Like hands on, like really hands on things like nursing, you have to be in the classroom for that. So, again, we'll see how it goes. I think Daytona State is going nearly all virtual. I, I have my issues about going virtual. Again, some classes it works, some classes it doesn't. That, that's that's neither here nor there. Um, WWE does say they want to get back in arenas by September 1st. Rumors and innuendo said the state of Florida might be going, say, nope, closing stuff down again, which is somewhat okay by me. means I get weekends off while I still work my at-home job. Because I was smart and I got some degrees to prove it. Um, so yeah, uh, wait, where was I? I was talking about Jeff Hardy and, and this thing about how they're going to get people in, um, not by having these matches or not. Miz is very strike heavy. Again, Morrison was the loudest person in the crowd, and again, that's a pretty small building. I wonder. I know there's a Dr. Phillips Center. UNF has a semi outdoor thing, but that's in Jacksonville. I wonder if Sun Full Sail has to have something. Um, Florida Tech, I know it has something. WWE just needs to choose a better venue where they can have fans, I guess. Because this performance center is getting kind of old. I think even in AAA, like they did like a couple. Like like two web shows, and they're like, this ain't working. It's very hard for the luchadors. They're so used to like sending flames over crowds' heads and jumping into the stadium. So that's a whole other issue. That and hopefully they'll have triple meaning. That's I think coming up. 
Honestly, I don't know if it's going to be the 8th. Because I've heard reports it's going to be the 22nd. So I have no idea. And then I'll, I'll talk about a little bit about it next week at the end of the show. Um, Jeff Hardy gets beat up very... It means a strike heavy. Jeff does a twist to fate. However, uh, Morrison interferes. Eventually, he takes out Miz and Morrison outside the ring. Uh, outside the ring, Jeff goes face first into the, into the table. And he gets boarded. <laughs> Two-minute boarding, Miz. Penalty box. Yep, sent right into the boards. But that's the only fun thing about WWE is that you can call boarding pel- penalties now. So that's not too bad. And then uh, Miz, when Jeff got back in, it was a slingshot into the second rope. Or catapult. I like that. Very classic Stone Cold Steve Austin ish. Then Miz does the kicks and knees and finishes with his clothesline. Uh, Jeff Hardy tries to twist the fate a second time, but Miz, turns, Miz counters that into the short DDT. He does yes kicks. Now I'll turn to the hey, hey kicks. Where well, it goes kick, kick, hey, hey. And then during the pause, ho, ho. Hey, hey, ho, ho. Hey, hey, ho, ho. I like the fact that Morrison has the most energy of all the people. Johnny Mundo's so good. I just refuse to call him John Morrison, too. I think even on Jim Cornette, the one bad thing about John Morrison is that he's had so many names, there is no name recognition. Like AJ Styles has been AJ Styles forever. He had a big enough name where he could keep his name and people recognized him. Uh, people knew who Dustin Rhodes was, even though he was a gold dust. But he held gold dust forever. <sighs> who else had it? I mean, Cody was the ravishing Cody Rhodes and then Stardust before he was, he was let go. There has to be better examples. But again, John Morrison suffers from that lack of name recognition. I'll give my credit to Jim Cornette. He's actually right about that. He says, Johnny Window is amazing in-ring talent. Name recognition sucks. He's not wrong. Wow. Jim Cornette's being right about a lot of things nowadays. Indeed. Uh, let's see. Then the scroll, skull crushing finale got, got reversed into a roll-up. Uh, Morrison got up. On the ring, and then he got down. Sheamus was was on the was on the screen. He distracted the mat. I'll tell you what, this was the botchiest finish ever. Miz somehow botched the roll up, and Jeff botched the roll up of the roll up. I don't know what those two did. And I think I'm gonna lower this because this it wasn't bad. You know what? I'll, I'll keep it what it was. Only because of only because of the, the really good moments. It's one of those matches. The good was good. The bad was bad. Most of it was in between. But I'll say it's more towards the good. But this was... Uh, so, um... Jeff Hardy won. And there's going to be one more week to the go-home show. Even though he did get distracted. It was just a weird, botchy finish. Still, I, I couldn't do much better. This was a good cheeseburger match. Then Cesaro and Shinsuke Nakamura have a have an interview with Sh- Sh- Sarah Schreiber. Jeez, that's a mouthful to say. I'm actually shocked that I remembered what her name finally was. I am interview robot Shinsuke Nakamura. Tell me your opinion on match. Oh, you have no opinion. Cesaro, what is your opinion on match? Thankfully, Cesaro took the mic and started to rattle off. That was pretty good. My hydration food from right on. Because it is pizza night, as you can probably tell by the uh, thumbnail. Then we have Sasha Banks. I almost said Sasha Bailey <laughs> and, and Banks. But no, it's uh, Bailey and Sasha Banks take on Alexa C- Cross and Nikki Bliss. God, I've lost it. Alexa Bliss and Nikki Cross. Uh, Alexa and Nikki jump Bailey and Sasha. Primary led by Nikki Cross. They need to let 
Nikki being Nikki. She is good when she's Nikki Cross. Um, again, this match, Nikki Cross is just the best. And before, yeah, I'll get to that, what happened before the match, because this is set up to some awfulness. Wow, this might have been the best night of the night. Best match of the night. Uh, quick tags by Sasha Banks and Bailey. They beat up Nikki a little bit. Uh, poor Nikki. She, she's just getting beat up for a while. And then Nikki said, It's time to become Nikki Glenn Cross. Uh, she traps Bailey in the ring apron cover. Starts to beat up with forearms. Alexa tags herself in. Nikki and Alexa do some double teaming. There's a head scissors. That was... This whole card was botchy. Wow, you give it a ham sandwich. Wow. Um, yeah, it was a botchy head scissors. I mean, Sasha Banks literally like threw herself through the ropes. It seemed like Nikki Cross let go of the head scissors, or they didn't, or I don't know what happened. They didn't stay on long enough, and like Nikki. Alexa Bliss was like falling. So so here is Sasha Banks, Nikki Cro um Alexa Bliss's legs. Ooh, I'm gonna fall. So I, oh, I have to take my dive. Like it was that weird couple second delay. It's just really noticeable and it's like really botching. Then there was the uh, roll up. Again, not, Sasha Banks with the roll up. Again, not necessarily the smoothest. Then there was, this is actually pretty good. Bailey catapulted Sasha Banks and she just went whap to Alexa Bliss. That was pretty good. Um, then it was a heel choke double team. Whenever the heels can do that, it was something I could do though. Uh, Bailey, she's good at trash talking. Nikki Cross is on Nikki Cross. Beats up everyone. Alexa Bliss gets, gets the tag in. Nikki Cross hit the actually hit the headbutt to the gut. That was really good. Um, then Bailey won with a roll up and dirty pin after Alexa Bliss got in. <sighs> it was a ham sandwich of a match. Then preceding this, Dana Brooke. Who looked absolutely amazing. She she can shake her hips. She has she was shaking the booty that her mother and, and the Lord Creator God gave her. I'll tell you what, especially in that tight pleather outfit with like heel boots. Woo! But again, she's had a lot of work done. Oh, also, I'd like to mention, it looked like and it might be it's either me. I think I actually read it somewhere. I know she got I know Alexa Bliss got breast augmentation done. She had a boob job. But it also looks like she got like some rhinoplasty done. And for some reason, I don't know if the rhinoplasty was showing. Because she hasn't been featured in, in a while, actually. In like a couple of weeks. And I know there was some time between tapings. I wonder if she got rhinoplasty. Or if that was a really bad makeup job. I'll tell you what. And I've said this a bunch of times. And this is going to make this video go long. The WWE women. I'll be honest folks. Nine times out of ten. There's, there's always going to be that, that one outlier. That's, that's not too bad. Nine times out of bad. They look. And I know that I know they do it for TV reasons. And it, it, it accentuates facial features ugh, to some degree. But I'll tell you what. The WWE women, for the most part, again, 9 out of 10 times, they look so much cuter and f more feminine. Natural. I mean, Alexa Bliss looks a Adorably cute, natural, with the makeup on, she looks all dolled up. And I know some people, and I used to tell my ex-girlfriend that all the time, it's like, but sweetie, you're so cute looking without the makeup. But we're going to Walmart. I have to look my best. We're going to freaking Walmart. 
You don't have to put on makeup to go to Walmart. The hell, I just put on a freaking wrestling t-shirt, jean shorts, and, and some sandals. I mean, I do draw I do draw the line at flip-flops. <laughs> but still, I mean, who else? Dana Brooke looks. Whoa. You ever see Dana Brooke without makeup? But she puts on the makeup and you're like, she looks like a $2 whore. Sonya Deville is another one. No makeup? Oh my god. Once she puts that makeup on, you're like, oh. Mandy Rose is iffy. I can't tell if I like her better with or without makeup. Lana's so much better without makeup. Carmella's so much better without makeup. Naomi's so much better without makeup. The only, uh, honestly, this sounds terrible. The only woman on the WWE or NXT roster who I can't recognize without her makeup is Bianca Belair. Naomi, I, I've seen without makeup. She looks like Naomi. She looks like a better, better Naomi. I don't know. She kind of looks the same. I don't think she does a lot, though. Might be the eyes, but that's about it, though. But some of them, though. Natalia looks... Maybe Natalia looks better with makeup. Who knows? Liv? Again, she just looks dolled up. Sarah Logan, actually... Sarah Logan... Sarah Logan and Bianca Belair. Out of all the women in NXT, in NXT and WWE, they're probably the two that look best with makeup. Yeah, that's about 9 out of 10. Those numbers hold true. And that's, hey, it's just my opinion. You know what? Bianca Belair is still an amazingly beautiful woman. Sarah Logan, congratulations, Sarah Logan. And I will try and speed the show up. So then um, they did a whole replay of Money in the Bank, um, Bray Wyatt versus Braun Strowman. Already reviewed it. What under the bridge? Do they come out for an interview with Shara Schreiber? They're having some fun with her. She's having fun back. Just don't get <laughs> coronavirus, Shara Schreiber. <laughs> Who was it in Discord? Someone posted a video of, or a picture of Moxley saying, hey, hey, honey, he looked different tonight. Yeah, that's because Renee Young's at home with coronavirus. And then we found, and then it was Lacey Evans doing do, re, mi, fa, so, la, di, do. And we find out there was going to be a karaoke contest. This was going to go one of two ways. I went the second way. I think it was Jay Uso came out. The Uso who's not getting surgery. I can't tell. He knows who to vote. He knows who's going to win. Or he knows who he knows who better win if anyone's going to get some nookie in the next couple days. So Jay Uso, we have SmackDown karaoke. And they all had to sing former wrestlers sing songs. Lacey Evans sings um, My Baby Tonight which was done either by Jeff Jarrett or the Road Dog, Double J, Jesse James. And actually, it wasn't too bad. She did lose the back of it. Not terrible. She was in, like, some whole dress. It was, she gets way too, again, I know what she's going for, but she actually looks cuter without makeup than she does with makeup. Again, she looks like the Lacey Evans character versus like whoever Lacey Evans is in real life. And I don't know. I don't get it. Dana Brooke cannot sing the honky tonk man to save her life. No. Um, she can shake her hips though. Uh, she can do the hip swivel. She can do the shimmy shimmy shake. But uh, that's about as far as she goes with that. 
Uh, Tamina, it's time to play the game. Only Lenny can sing that. Only Lemmy can sing that song. I'm sorry, Tamina. You're you're just. That's it. <laughs> people, people actually shouted Dana Brooke. You suck. How terrible do you have to be a karaoke for your own peers to say, you suck? Jesus. Bad. <laughs> they didn't even tell Tamina, you suck. They just would go, boo. Wow, karaoke is supposed to be fun. This wasn't fun. Naomi did. Actually, she did a really good American dream. But they stole my idea. I do hobo karaoke for the last hour or during the last hour of Impact Wrestling. I want to copyright violate WWE for stealing my gimmick. That's hobo karaoke. Boo, WWE. Boo! How dare you steal a hobo karaoke by having those those four or having that one bimbo and the three ladies do karaoke. And then um, Naomi actually did pretty good. Of course Naomi was going to win. Because if not, someone was sleeping on the couch. Lacey calls Naomi say, Oh, you, or oh, whatever she, whatever her catchphrase is, I forget it now. That's how much I care about Lacey Evans. And then, and then she hit her with a shoe. She took her shoes off. So this set up the match, and this was a weird match. So it was Naomi versus Lacey Evans, but only Naomi was in somewhat ring gear. She took off her shoes. Lacey Evans was in a dress and barefoot. Wait a second. Where have I seen these matches before? Oh, wait, that's right. I never saw them because I gave up watching wrestling during this time. Duh. Oh, does WWE want to lose another viewer? I don't know. I'll tell you what, they, they lost a whole bunch of people over on YouTube because you can see the counter. Go, ooh. Um, again, Naomi was barefoot too. I was amazed at that. Lacey dressed like choked her. Lacey choked Naomi with her, her dress. She put Naomi's he head under her dress and choked her with it. Why does that seem... HLA? I don't know. I I wish Lacey Evans would stuff my head under I wish I wish a bunch of women that that I somewhat know would stuff my head underneath their dress. But that doesn't happen to me though. I think if I put my head under a woman's dress, I think I think they call the cops on me. The cops beat me and tase me and beat me some more and choke me. Which I'm in full support of, because cops do need to do their job. I've heard some true horror stories about, I think in Seattle, they want to defund their police. And it's literally the Wild West in parts of Seattle. Um, other parts of the country, people are just going absolutely crazy. Why, why can't people just live by the basic credo of don't do anything stupid? Pretty soon in Florida, it's going to become the wild, wild south. Which means I have to go get my Breda 22 caliber Neos 6-inch barrel gun. Breda. Quality firearms. Um, yeah, and then they go outside. Um, Dana Brooks said something. And then Lacey, then, then Lacey slapped her. Um, Tamina had an idea. She got slapped. Brawl in the middle of the ring. 
Uh, well, the one thing I will say, the one redeeming fact about this match, I'm actually kind of impressed that Dana Brooke can wrestle in those high heels. Impressive. Other than that, this whole thing was a piece of toast. And then finally, AJ Styles comes out. He two sweets. Sarah Schreiber. Sarah Schreiber's like, huh? What's that? I was like, oh, I, I, yeah, yeah. Sarah Schreiber gets to learn how to two sweet. Ah, yeah. Pulls a promo. Um, AJ Styles is going to face Matt Riddle. I forget if it's next week or at. Extreme rules. And wow, that's, that's going to be a train wreck of a show already. Um, then the final match, it was New Day taking on Shinsuke Nakamura and, C and Cesaro. Uh, Shinsuke Nakamura starts fast. He can't... Again, he just goes in with his knees and elbows. Oh, his, his knee lift on Kofi looked amazing. Cesaro comes in. And then, oh boy, we got some of the heavy hitters. The Cesaro Kofi Kingston um, went out for a while. Kofi gets his second breath, sends him to the corner for the unicorn stomp. We haven't seen the unicorn stomp in a while. Uh, let's see. From there, Kofi a launch. He got from the outside. He got caught with a European uppercut. That looked amazing. Cesaro is the best. And then you have strong guy Cesaro taking on big guy Biggie. Oh! They could have this match every other week, and it would be fun. Oh, because those two are so good, but they didn't have a stupid finish like they did. Uh, Cesaro again, strong. I think, actually, most people say pound for pound, Cesaro is one of the strongest people in the WWE. When you see him go against Big E, you can see why. Uh, Kofi then tries to fight out of the corner. He, he went for the SO. He went for the yeah SOS. Couldn't get all of it though. Um, then all four men go in the ring, and I'll tell you what, I applaud this referee. He knows the rules of professional wrestling. All four men go in the ring. Okay, one, two. I told you guys get out of here. Three. Come on, just two guys. Four. I I told you. When I get five, I'm gonna I'm gonna call the match. So you guys aren't listening to me. Five, five. Wait, why? Are you, why is it four people in the ring? That's it. That's it. The rules of professional wrestling say you have a five count. Even in AEW, you have a ten count. But in WWE, at least the referees adhere to the rules and make the counts. AEW, Aubrey, boo! Yay, WWE. Boo, AEW. I'm sure, <laughs> sure Jim Cornette has something to say about that. But this referee knows the rules. He said, you know what? No one's listening to me. No, five counts have been issued. I've warned you I've warned you guys. Three said, hey, listen, I only want to see two people here. Four, hey, two people in the ring. The last time I'm warning you. Five, hey, I've warned you guys. And I'm giving you a count. Get out of here. Uh, he calls, say no. Ding, ding, ding. It's a no contest, baby. It's a true death definitive. But this math has so much potential. It's a dust ham sandwich, baby. And then they start to brawl for the last three minutes. Uh, Big E gets beat up. Kofi goes through a table. Big E goes sent, sent to the steps. Shinsuke and Shinsuke Nakamura and Cesaro actually look pretty strong. I'll tell you what, if it wasn't for that terrible death to finish, because this was a death sandwich. Oh, this actually would have been a good match. I'll tell you what, this has been the worst SmackDown in a while. Ham sandwich, cheeseburger, toast, ham sandwich. One, two. 
Man, this is like... This is like the, the super cheapest ham sandwich of SmackDown you ever saw. Oh, the good news is it had to end. And wow, that was not a good SmackDown, folks. Um, hopefully next week. And they, they had a good Monday Night Raw, too. Hopefully next week is better. Oh, about next week. Monday, I'll be here. I'll be here Monday, do my show. Uh, remember, Tuesday, it's 9 o'clock Eastern Standard Time for Impact. It's 9 to 11 now. They changed that on me. I'm so I do apologize for that. I got a little bit more time at the gym. I can actually I have to go grocery shopping that day. But that's a whole other issue. Uh, Wednesday is going to be AEW. We'll see if they do anything for Fight for the Fallen. Again, I'm not keen on AEW having these like names for for their Dynamite show. Um, they could have just rescheduled it, and it would have been simpler. But I don't control things. Thursday, Thursday, it's either going to be El Vagabundo, Hobo Vente Cinco, or Dr. Tom showing up for predictions. I have to figure out who to invite over. Even if Dr. Tom feels like coming over, who knows? Friday, wow, next week is a full week of wrestling. It's SmackDown Review. Saturday, I should be getting in in time to talk all about Slammiversary. We'll see how that goes. I think that starts at 8. I get home about quarter two, so that should be okay. Uh, next Sunday, it's the whole show with Extreme Rules. I'll probably miss part of that. I'll get to what I can and cover the rest probably towards the end, do a little bit flip flop of the session. I'll catch up. I'll, I'll catch up on the highlights eventually. And that's it. Again, I'd like to thank you guys. So hopefully I was a little bit more than a